good everybody welcome back to another my name toys video today we have your smackdown live superstar shakeup review as you guys know on monday night or tuesday morning you stupid idiot moron we went over the monday night raw results of the superstar shakeup and we talked about how terrible of a show it was and everything like that but for me today smackdown lives episode and smackdown lives version of the superstar shakeup though it wasn't as shaken up there weren't as many call-ups obviously it's a smaller show it's a shorter show I think that it was a much better show. It, it just was more refreshing. The talent was better. It just, it freaking made my mind not hurt. And I actually enjoyed this show a lot. I don't know if it's just because my boy Finn Balor is over here on the blue brand finally. And, and that his career could take off much better over here on SmackDown Live. But I do enjoy this move. And I don't know, man. Just the, the overall feel of the show was a lot more refreshing. It was great. And we're going to go over all of my thoughts here today on what happened last night at SmackDown live for the superstar shakeup. So let's start things off with the end result. Roman Reigns, the biggest signee in the history of SmackDown Live. At first they were telling us guys that it was Elias, but obviously we all knew that wasn't true. I was like, at first guys, I'm going to be honest, I thought they threw us for a bait and switch again. I thought they did the same thing they did the night after WrestleMania, you know, where we're going to have this unification match and they make you hang around and hang around just to have the match thrown out. I thought they were going to do the same thing here where they make us hang around and hang around and then it ends up being Elias and then we're all just like, oh, okay, so yeah, you, you totally just made me sit here and wait just to be surprised by Elias, and you, you know dang well what you were doing. But they didn't do that. They actually brought out the big dog, Roman Reigns, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, it's actually kind of refreshing to see Roman Reigns on SmackDown Live. Do I think he's the biggest signee ever in SmackDown history? Absolutely not. But uh, I'm not going to sit here and crap on Roman Reigns. I like Roman Reigns, and I think this is a great move for him, and I think this is a great move for Monday Night Raw. I think it's going to be very refreshing to see the big dog over on SmackDown Live. It's just a much better experience here. You know, we really haven't seen him on SmackDown Live in this capacity away from Seth Rollins, away from Braun Strowman, away from just Monday Night Raw itself. This is going to be a whole lot better in my opinion, and I can't wait to see where they go with this over on SmackDown Live. I'm definitely way more excited for the Superstar Shakeup on SmackDown Live than I am for Raw, but uh, it'll be interesting for both brands definitely to see where they go from here. That's what the Superstar Shakeup's all about, but I am happy that Roman Reigns is here, and I'm I'm uh, the only thing I'm worried about is that he's going to take some limelight away from other baby faces, such as Finn Balor. I think Finn Balor may suffer because Roman Reigns is here, but hopefully not. You know, uh, Kevin Owens, my boy, is over there, and I am, I'm, I'm excited for the future, man. I'm actually really happy coming out of SmackDown Live with what they gave us. My boy Finn Balor, you guys know that he also made the jump over to SmackDown Live. I think it was, was it Kevin Owens? Kevin Owens and the New Day were in the middle of the ring. That That's probably the only thing that I didn't like about the show is that they were, like, they made Kevin Owens kind of look like a loser, but I'm hoping that it eventually leads to him turning heel on the New Day and going after the WWE Championship and Kofi Kingston. Hopefully, that is what happens out of that storyline because I wasn't feeling him eating the pancakes and the dancing. It's okay, I guess, for one night and hopefully they build towards that heel turn, but I, I wasn't feeling my boy, man. I, I like the I like the heelish, I like the the freaking dastardly KO that, we're, that we love. But I'm all for it at the moment. I just want this not to continue for weeks and weeks and weeks. Let's, let's get to that heel turn, man. But Finn Balor goes one-on-one -on -one with Moose. Mustafa Ali in a great television match. Really enjoyed this matchup. I thought that both guys clashed well. I knew as soon as as Ali came out, Mustafa Ali came out, it was going to be an epic one and by God was it. But Finn Balor does win in his SmackDown Live debut. I hate it for Ali, but they didn't pin their Intercontinental Champion, so hopefully we get him a heel to go one-on-one -on -one with. Maybe we can get a top heel over here to take on Finn Balor for that Intercontinental title. Give him a good feud to start off his time on SmackDown Live. We didn't see Drew McIntyre which is something that I was totally blown away by. I thought for sure we were going to see Drew McIntyre on this night. He did not make the switch, but if they would break up Shinsuke and Rusev, and you know, we, we could possibly have one of those go after the IC title. I think Finn Balor and Shinsuke would be a great IC title bout. One thing to also mention with Finn Balor is that the club, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, I know they're probably AEW bound by now because their careers have actually just been absolutely trashed on the main roster. I think that we get a reunion between the three 
three men, maybe uh, Finn Balor, Carl Anderson, Lou Gallows, mixing it up. Maybe a, maybe a little, th you know they would get cheered, so I doubt they would be heel, but it would be cool to see them running around. I think that would be absolutely incredible here in WWE. You know, three years too late, mind you, but you know, better late than never, I guess. And I would take something like that. Buddy Murphy is another guy who is making his way to SmackDown Live. What an excellent move. Another round of applause for WWE. Beautiful stuff, man. He's going to totally thrive here. My boy Cedric goes over to Raw. My boy Buddy goes over to SmackDown Live. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. What a great performer. He deserves to be here on SmackDown Live. I hope that uh, he can get over here and be a top heel. Maybe, maybe a heel Buddy Murphy going in, taking on an, a face Intercontinental Champion Finn Balor. How about that? That would be a beautiful feud. I think that they would have absolutely fantastic matches over on SmackDown. And uh, another thing of note, uh, me and my buddy stage creator were talking about it, and they're totally... They are totally going to change Buddy Murphy's name to Murphy. Get ready for it. It's gonna, he's going to be known as Murphy, and that's it. He will drop the Buddy persona, I guarantee it. Another thing that could happen, Cedric Alexander, going to be known as Cedric soon. So just prepare yourselves for it. I, I guarantee it. Cedric and Murphy will be their new names soon. My girl Ember Moon and my girl Bailey coming over here on to SmackDown Live. I think that the SmackDown Live women's division is stacked when you look at it compared to Monday Night Raw. I can't even remember who's on Monday Night Raw, in, including not only these two, but you have Kyrie Sane making her way over in the Superstar Shakeup, Mickey James showing up. I don't have my Mickey James here because I ripped her head off for a custom, but uh, I'll probably get her replaced later on. That's not a big deal. She's not really wrestling uh, in a capacity right now where it's relevant, so this totally works out. I think this is pretty sweet, though, that Bailey and Ember Moon are over here. I guess Sasha Banks, if she decides to return, she will go to Monday Night Raw, I'm guessing. But you also have Charlotte Flair. You also have Asuka. You also have Carmella. I mean, this this uh, SmackDown Live is definitely looking a lot better than Monday Night Raw with Lacey Evans and Natalya and whoever the hell else they got over there. I can't even remember who else they have over there. But Apollo Crews and Chad Gable also made the jump from Raw over to SmackDown. And I think these two guys fit SmackDown much better. I doubt they actually are going to get into a wrestling capacity. One thing I will say is I'm so glad to see Chad Gable away from Bobby Roode. Does this mean that we're going to get a heel singles Bobby Roode over on Monday Night Raw and we're going to get a babyface mid-card Chad Gable on SmackDown Live? Beautiful stuff, WWE. Good job. Let's give them a little clap here because they're actually making good moves here. But let's be real. They're probably not going to do anything with it, guys. I mean, Chad Gable, they, they should have had him as a singles wrestler as soon as American Alpha split up. He could have been a great underdog uh, mid-card guy. He's a great wrestler. He's one of my favorite guys in the entire company, and I think that uh, it would be fantastic to see him actually get some good work in as a single singles wrestler. Apollo Crews, it's probably too late for him as well, but I think he could gr be a great mid-card talent on SmackDown Live as well. Both guys just fit that small pond much better um, than over on Monday Night Raw where he gets swallowed up, but Bobby Roode being a singles heel on Raw would be great, so that is something that I'm definitely going to have my eye out on, but I don't trust Monday Night Raw with anything. So SmackDown Live, man, just such a breath of fresh air. There's so many things that we can talk about and get to when you look at the grand scheme of things. When you look at the entire roster surrounding SmackDown Live after this shakeup, it just looks so much better. I'm, I'm just, again, I'm very excited. The different tones here, different rally cry that you're hearing from me compared to today. Uh, compared to last night or yesterday. So I am feeling a lot better now about... Uh I'm feeling a whole lot better about SmackDown than I am Monday Night Raw. You guys missed Monday Night Raw's review and Superstar Shake-Up reactions. Definitely go check that out on the channel because uh, there's a there's some rants in there where we talk about everything wrong with the show. And after they've split up Gable and Rude here, that means that we're missing another tag team on Monday Night Raw. I guess you got the you got the War Raiders, you got the Usos. I guess you got Heavy Machinery still since we didn't see them on SmackDown Live. You got Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. You got the Revival. You got the B Team. Not the greatest uh, tag. Team division there over on Monday Night Raw. But on SmackDown, I mean, who, who do we have now? We have the club. We have the New Day. We don't have Sanity anymore because they uh, apparently broke up. Alexander Wolf is out of the company. Eric Young's over on Monday Night Raw in a singles role. Killian Dane is all by himself now. So I don't know if they're going to turn in, turn him into a single star. We also have Lars Sullivan in this category. I thought he was going to be on Raw, but he's actually on SmackDown now. But you guys know how I feel about Lars Sullivan. I think he's in the same boat for me as Trash Corbin. He's in the same boat for me for me 
as Braun Strowman almost. I like Braun Strowman a lot more than Lars, but Lars Sullivan comes out to crickets. He's not very entertaining, guys. He's very boring. He's just bland and does the same thing that every big heel guy does, so I am just not on the Lars Sullivan fan. But we'll have to see what goes down for Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live next week as we uh, get new feel. Like, guys, one thing I want to add here at the end of the video, I know that uh, I really haven't nitpicked at all here, but um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm sick of, I love Kofi, and I love Becky Lynch, but I am so sick of hearing them come out and cut a promo. I did it. I won my championship. These are my titles. I did this. I defeated Ronda Rousey. I pinned Ronda Rousey. It's my moment. I did it. For my family. For my fans. Da 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 da. I'm sick of hearing that same rhetoric and that same language and dialogue every single week. Like, we know you won at WrestleMania. The night after WrestleMania at Raw and the night after WrestleMania at SmackDown. That's fine. But don't, not every single week do we have to keep referring back to you winning your championship or your championships? I'm sick of seeing WrestleMania replays two weeks after WrestleMania. I don't know. That's just something that I thought of. I was like, good God. It's like they're beating a dead horse at this point. You keep on referring to it and you keep on doing it. People, it's going to lose its special touch. I mean, like, good Lord. You can reference back to it in storyline like later on at another show maybe and reference back to how we got here. But why do you have to do it every single week on Raw and SmackDown them come out and cut a promo about what they did at Mania. We know what they did at Mania. Again, I think once or twice was great, but now it's a kind of overkill at this point. But again, I love SmackDown Live. I think these are great moves. I'm looking forward to these moves, and I'm excited for it, man. So I guess we can forge on and see how Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live goes. I still don't have that much faith in Raw, guys. I mean, good lord, that show is just shambles. But SmackDown Live looks great, and I'm excited for it like I have been in years past. We still have Randy Orton over here. On SmackDown Live, that's another point to take in. And I hope they just don't thrust Roman Reigns into the main event and put the WWE Championship on him because that will totally be rejected. He will get booed. He, as he already kind of has since he's returned, and they will totally boo this man if they push him to the moon. I guarantee it, they will boo him, and you don't want to have that. You want him to uh, naturally and gradually be a babyface and not book him so strongly and make him look like a Jesus out there. But that pretty much does it for my SmackDown Live Superstar Shakeup review, guys. I think I've covered everything. I didn't want to leave anything out here in today's video, but thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, comment down below your thoughts on SmackDown. SmackDown Live last night. What do you think about the big dog, my boy Finn, Ember, Elias, Bailey, Apollo Crews, Chad Gable, Lars Sullivan, and the rest of the field going over to SmackDown Live? Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.